So I'm going to attempt to do one of those screencasts showing off uh, how to use loops inside of Cubase. I don't know if this is going to work. I have the most jury-rigged system I can think of, rather than having everything with internal recording of audio on, on my screen that's over here that you can't see. I have main camera there, a microphone with me talking going into it, and then I'm going to screen record on my main composing rig, put it all together later, and see if it works. So anyways, this is using loops inside of Cubase. Let's check that out. Okay, so again, I'm doing this in a kind of not ideal way, so we'll see if this works, but the first thing you wanna do is open up Cubase, of course, and you have your blank template here. I just opened up an empty one, and we wanna use the media bay. Best way to get to the media bay, you can go up to, um, up to media, media bay, or just hit F5. It brings up your media bay, and it has all the built-in loops that come with Cubase, and that's what I'm using. I'm not using any third party for this. I'm just using what came inside of Cubase. And from the, uh, what I'm gonna be using is the, there's built-in audio loops that came with it, and then there are what I prefer to use, which are the MIDI loops. So they're, they're pre-little sequenced MIDI parts um, that use the Halion engine. Uh, to, to play them back and so I'm going to use that um, and then there's some one shots which are also really good. Now as a I guess sort of an old school composer who likes to write things out in notation first and then bring the parts in and and put everything into into Cubase and apply the sounds loops are a little out of my wheelhouse I'll be I'll be honest I use them but I usually use them in conjunction with um, without loops. I usually use them in conjunction with uh, stuff that I've written out kind of the old-fashioned way and applied samples to. Um, and uh, what I typically do use, especially if there's a time crunch, are percussion um, percussion loops, uh, especially big action uh, loops where there's a lot going on and I know what I want and I could write it out but it's a matter of taking two hours to write it out, each individual part within the percussion line, or just find a good loop and go with it. Uh, I usually use the ones that come with uh, East West in their Composer Cloud. Storm Drum One had some really good loops. In fact, I think all three of the Storm Drums do. And later on, they did the MIDI loop thing, which again, I, I do prefer to use those. Uh, and that's because you can actually change the the not only the sounds that apply to them. Uh, so if you have a better sounding uh, Tycho drum, rather than using the one that comes with Halion, you could use a really good one that uh, maybe you bought third party. Um, you just might have to tweak the 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 note uh, the note pitch because it might be one hit might be uh, C1 in one library and it might be G1. Uh, in another library. So you'd have to play around with that, but you'd still have the rhythm, you'd still have uh, the uh, dynamics and velocity that are applied to it. Um, and you can tweak that stuff a lot easier in MIDI loops also. But more so, if you do want to use recorded, uh, recorded loops of, um, of MIDI loops rather, that have uh, uh, something like a string pad and the the loop is in C major. It's just playing a C major triad, just uh, maybe in quarter notes. But the tune you want to write, you want it in D minor. Well, you can alter the alter the sound. So it's almost like having a ghost writer that's written some parts for you, and then you go back and tweak them. So I do prefer to use the MIDI loops, uh, but uh, one shots are really good too. But for this, uh, I'll use a combination, whatever I whatever I can come up with. All right, so inside of Media Bay, uh, you have your different instrument categories, subcategories, uh, style, substyle, uh, characteristics, and key. So for this, uh, I've been toying around with some things. Uh, I was going to try to write a jazz tune, but it's I find it a little harder to use loops uh, when writing something that's uh, really chromatic like jazz is. Um, so... 
uh, I, I played around with some stuff and I, I have something that I've already written that I'll put at the end using the loops, but I just wanted to show you around Media Bay and maybe recreate part of, of what I had written before. So anyways, um, so let's go with, uh, what would be good? Ambient, chill out, uh, dark ambient. Um, let's see, dark. Dark is good. And so as you can see here, uh, these guys here with the two lines, the small line and the longer line, that's a that's a MIDI loop. That um, So those are the ones you can manipulate. And then these guys here with the little audio looking um, triangle, those are the uh, pre-recorded audio loops. And then uh, they could also be one shots. But anyways, let's grab ZenPad intro and put it in. So that pops up here, we play it back. All right, not too bad. And when we open up the mixer, we can see that there have already been, oh, where are we at? Some EQing done to it. And uh, what else do we have? Looks like they already added some, uh, looks like more EQ, just various EQs. So that's that's the other nice thing about these um, about these MIDI loops is they'll already have processing on them that you can go and mess with and tweak to your liking. And then when you click on it to open up the editor, you see you have the standard piano roll just like you would in uh, writing out a MIDI line from scratch. Again, that's it's like having a ghostwriter that's written something for you that you can go in and tweak. So if I want this up a half step, I can just move it up a half step without without too much uh, much issue. So anyways, let's let's add some more onto this. So it open Media Bay again. F five brings it up, and let's add in verse A. And you can put it on a different line, or it's still that Zen pad, so you could double it up, but I'll keep it on its own line for right now. Oh, that actually sounds like the, the other one. So let's grab a different one. Is that it again? Oh, okay, that's right. They, um, like I said, I was playing around with these earlier, and they added a second line, so let's add that on. All right, and that handy, uh, I'll do that handy little trick where you hit option, it turns your cursor into some scissors with a little box around it. That means you can, it's gonna cut and copy that over rather than just move it. I like that little trick. And now, when it repeats, Let's say I want this to go up an octave, so I can just shift up, shift up, shift up. So I went up several octaves. Let's go up one more. So I went up four octaves there, and you can play around with the velocity settings, which is really nice. And let's add a bass. Oh, wrong thing. So again, let's see, where's darkest base? That's pretty good. Let's see how that works. Cool. Let's let's keep going with that. I like that. Let's take all of this, do that again, move it over. And then in here, let's add some drums. Let's see, where are my drums? Well, let's just add one of these uh, pre-recorded audio things and I might change that later. Let's see what it sounds like. That was really loud. Let's 
So we turn that down. Not too bad. Okay. If I hit command and right click, it can bring up some options. And I can go down here and hit some processes. Let's uh, pitch shift that down. So that's on a C, so let's go down an octave. Okay, probably still a little, little bright, but that's fine. We'll go with it. And then we'll open up the mixer and let's copy over Pinterest. <laughs> so that uh, option hold thing, you can do that within the rack also to move over effects if you just want to copy them right over, which is pretty handy. So that just adds a little bit of of reverb to that. All right, well, I'm gonna keep going with this uh, rather than having you just sit here, watch me play around with sounds and tweak stuff. You get the idea of, of how to get stuff in there. So I'm going to jump ahead now. Okay, so we're back and I've added a few more things. Um, uh, you'll see that I mostly used a lot of uh, the MIDI um, the MIDI loops and again I like the MIDI loops because you can manipulate the sound for instance if I want to um, take this uh, the bass and uh, this uh, D note if I want to add another one I can do that And then let's say I also want to take the this one and copy this one over and uh, go up an octave. Um, actually, let's just go up a fifth to the A. Okay, let's see some of the other stuff I've added. At the beginning, I, I put in this, uh, this cool little metallic thing, just to add a little interest at the beginning. And then later on, I put in a um, this little drum fill in this uh, in this other section here, and then I also put in this cool glitch effect that I found. And then I also wanted to add a, a drop, not a drop as in like the, the dubstep, but just a, like a cool thuddy bass sound. So I, I added this in. Now it came out sounding a little metallic, but I, I played around with it a little bit and thought it sounded pretty cool in the end. So I went with it. And then I added in this this B section just to kind of make it more of a, a completed song. So here's that. All right, I'll play back the final tune for you here in a second. Uh, so yeah, writing with loops, it, like I said, it's not really in my wheelhouse, but uh, I think uh, it, it's something I definitely need to work on a little more. It's just another tool for the toolbox and the people that can work with loops really well can make some awesome music. And so uh, it, it's worth checking out and exploring a little more. So anyways, if you like this, uh, do the whole like and subscribe thing. Uh, if you have ideas for more videos, throw them down in the description and we'll see you on the next one.